in this tutorial i am going to show you how to eliminate null productions or epsilon productions from a production rule a production of the form a arrow epsilon is called a null production now such productions are not desired as we know that from type 1 onward grammar each grammar is length increasing grammar that means for any production rule u arrow v this particular property must be satisfied that means the length of the left hand side should be less than is equal to the length of the right hand side and if the epsilon productions are allowed this may be violated now how to eliminate the epsilon productions let us take this example here we have these production rules a arrow a s and a arrow a b a arrow epsilon and b arrow epsilon we clearly see that there are two epsilon productions a arrow epsilon and b arrow epsilon now in order to eliminate these epsilon productions we must incorporate the effect of these epsilon productions in the production rule that means we may need to add some more production rules in order to eliminate these epsilon productions now we can see that since a arrow epsilon is there and a arrow ab is there therefore we must we can derive a s ab from a s using this rule a s arrow ab and again using this rule what we can get b here that means s can derive b we can derive b from s in more steps now if we eliminate this particular rule then we may not be able to get b from s now while eliminating this we must make sure that this derivation is also possible even if this particular production rule is not there so in order to have that what you need to do is to just add this rule in the production rule set again since b arrow epsilon is a rule and we can derive a v from s now we can put b we can place we can we can put epsilon at b so we can derive a from s now if this b arrow epsilon is removed then this particular derivation is not possible a cannot be derived from s so in order to have this derivation possible what we need to do is to add s arrow a in the production rule again we can see that since a arrow epsilon and b arrow epsilon both are possible so s derives a b and we can put epsilon at a and we can again put epsilon at b that means in many steps a also derives epsilon so if this is the thing then obviously what we can get since a s could be derived from s and again putting epsilon at s what we can get s arrow a so s derives a in many steps now if we remove these two production rules then this particular derivation may not be possible so in order to have this derivation possible what we need to do is to add s arrow a in the production rule set so what we are doing we are removing the epsilon productions and we are adding some more productions to the production rule set in order to have the effect of these epsilon productions intact let us take one more example so this one s arrow s a s b s and s arrow epsilon now s is the start symbol and as you can see that s derives s s actually replaces this replace can be replaced with this s a s b s now if we try to eliminate this then this particular derivation s arrow s a s b s now we can have epsilon here so s derives a s b s so this particular derivation is not possible if we eliminate this and there are others as well so in order to have this derivation possible what you need to do is to add a s b s in the production rule similarly we need to add s a s b in the production rule and s arrow a s b in the production rule and so on that means how we can directly do this 
technique is this one we need to remove this just write the non epsilon productions first now here it is only one this is the non epsilon production now replace the epsilon productions on the right hand side one after another that means if we replace this s with the epsilon we must have this rule again we can replace this s then we get this rule again we can replace this s we get this rule now we will be replacing two s's simultaneously in that case this s and this s can be replaced with epsilon and we get we must have this rule in the production rule set again we can replace this and this s the second and the third one and we get s a b and we can replace the first and the third one in that case we get a s b now we can replace the three all the three s's with epsilon and we get this so if these production rules are added then we can eliminate the s arrow epsilon this particular epsilon production or null production then the this if this is the grammar if if the previous grammar was g and the new grammar is g dash then obviously the language remains unaffected lang l of g is equals to l of g dash without any doubt now there is one more questions that we must take into care that is if the language incorporates the epsilon itself then how we can do that now if we eliminate this s arrow epsilon it is clear that since start symbol derives the epsilon that means epsilon is element of language now for this particular g dash epsilon is not the element of language since we have not we cannot derive deter, determine we cannot derive epsilon from the start symbol now if epsilon is the part of the language then what we need to do is to introduce a new start symbol s1 and have this rule in the production rule set and s1 should also determine s a s b s now in the old grammar g this was the rule on the right hand side the old start symbol derives this so we should write s a s b s that means s1 the new start symbol should derive this and we should add all the other new rules in the production rule set so this is the grammar that is equivalent of this grammar now we have successfully incorporated epsilon as the part of the language and a new start symbol s1 has been introduced and we have made sure the fact that s1 is not on the right hand side of any rule so it's not length decreasing grammar it's always length increasing grammar since s1 is not appearing on the right hand side and also we have eliminated all the other epsilon productions successfully